All right, Tinker Nerds, the new year's here and the holidays are over. I hope you got everything you wished for. And I hope what you wished for was more Tinker Nut videos because if so, my dear sweet viewer, consider your wish grant. So last year, a couple weeks ago, we talked about SSH, the command line junkie's favorite remoting tool. I had mentioned in that video that there's a lot of cool things that you can do with SSH. So in this video, we're gonna explore one of them. Tunneling. Not the tunneling Elon Musk's boring company does. SSH tunneling is a lot nerdier than that. So come on, Tinker Dude, teach me how to tunnel. Teach me, teach me how to tunnel. To understand tunneling, you need to know how networking ports work. So let's figure that out first. Imagine a seaport with a bunch of boats. Seaports organize their docks using something called birth numbers. If a boat wants to dock, it is assigned a birth number, and that birth number tells it where to go so that it can deliver its packages. On a very basic level, networking ports are kind of similar. Depending on the data being delivered, networking protocols assign each shipment a specific port number, and that tells the data where to be delivered. Some common port numbers you may recognize are port 80 for HTTP or web traffic, and port 22 for SSH traffic. If you're curious, here's a nice list of more common networking ports. What's this got to do with SSH tunneling? We've already established that SSH tunneling is a direct secure connection to another computer so that you can control it. Well, tunneling allows you to take that SSH connection and smuggle or forward data from one port to another. So to test out these tunneling concepts, I'm gonna assume that you have an SSH client in one location, like work or school or something, and then an SSH server in a different location, say at home. I'm gonna be using the Windows 10 command prompt with OpenSSH installed. Windows users could use PuTTY, which is a really good GUI for SSH commands. But to keep things consistent, I'm using the command line interface because the commands are the same on Windows, Mac, and Linux. The first tunnel we'll try out is called local port forwarding. Let's say you're at work and you want to remote desktop into your computer at home, but your work blocks the remote desktop port 3389. What we can do is use an SSH tunnel to forward the blocked port 3389 to a different port number that isn't blocked. So on your work computer, open up a terminal and type SSH dash capital L for local port, the new port that you want to use, the name of the computer that you want to remote into, and then the remote desktop port that's blocked and then the username and location of your home SSH server. When you hit enter, it'll prompt you to log into your remote SSH server. Once you've done that, now if you open up the remote desktop application and type in localhost followed by the port number that you chose, it should connect. What the computer is doing is taking the data that's sent to the port that we created and forwarding it through our SSH tunnel, bypassing the firewall, and then when it gets to our computer at home, it then uses port 3389 to connect to our remote desktop application finishing the connection from there. Pretty doggone spectacular, right? We are just getting started. Next up, dynamic port forwarding. This is probably one of the most asked for use cases. Let's say that you run across a blocked website at work because your work has installed a web filter on port 80. By opening up a terminal and typing SSH capital D for dynamic, entering in a custom port number, and then your home SSH server credentials, you can create what's called a SOX proxy. And then to get a web browser like Chrome to use it, you need to go into your settings, search for proxy, land settings, check use a proxy server, click advanced, and then in the SOX option, type in localhost and then the custom port number that you chose. When you click OK, any web address typed into Chrome will be sent to your custom port through the SSH tunnel and then retrieved on your home computer using it to surf the web. Now we're cooking! We could stop there, but there's one more cool tunnel that I want to show you. You know how earlier we remoted into our home computer by forwarding the remote desktop port? Well, what if we wanted to reverse that process to remote into our computer at work? This is what's known as reverse tunneling. To accomplish this on your work computer, type SSH capital R for remote port forwarding, a random port number, the name of the computer that you want to remote into, and since it's this computer, I'm just going to type localhost then the remote desktop port 3389 and then your SSH server connection information for your server at home. When you hit enter it'll establish a connection and then when you get home open up the remote desktop client 
type in localhost and then the port number you chose and when you hit enter you should magically be connected. Now if for some reason you get an error that doesn't work you may need to check the SSH configuration settings on your home server. Go into sshd underscore config and make sure that gateway ports and allow TCP forwarding are both set to yes. That's good stuff. Now, as a final tip regarding reverse port forwarding, I'll answer the question I know you're all probably asking. If you have a locally hosted website that you've made and you want to access it from the internet without opening up any ports on your router, you can do that using reverse SSH tunneling. And what's even better is you can use a free service at servio.net to establish a reverse tunnel to your locally hosted website and make it publicly accessible. So basically you're just using a free SSH server that they've provided to access your website. I think that's a good place to stop. So let me know in the comments your favorite SSH tunneling tricks. Let me know about anything I've missed, what you liked, and what I got wrong. If you have any ideas, you can submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. You can click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please feel free to donate at patreon.com slash tinkernut. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to youtube.com slash tinkernut.